with welcome. Here in the UK it's tomato harvesting season and a question I often get asked when people see my harvest of tomatoes. What on earth are you going to do with so many tomatoes? Well as you see I have already started canning them up ready for using through the winter. I will use my canned tomatoes for making tomato soup bolognese sauce, tomato sauce, homemade baked beans and tomato sauce, lots of lovely things. But the first thing I'm going to do is eat some of these delicious tomatoes fresh with a fresh tomato salad and tomato sandwiches. So let's make a sandwich. Really simple, basic and delicious. So first of all, a couple slices of your favourite bread. I have a tiger bread here. Cover your bread with a good even spread of butter. It doesn't have to be thick butter, but you do need to spread it consistently all over the bread to stop those tomato juices soaking in and making your sandwich soggy. Lovely. Took the green bits off our tomatoes, of course. Another one with a green bit there with our sharp tomato chopping knife, which is the knife of your knife set that has this very fine serrated edge, a bit like a mini saw. And slice our tomatoes up. I'm the wrong way round, you can't see my hands in the way. Let me go around the other side. And slice up our tomatoes. There we go, that's better. <laughs> making a sandwich and filming making a sandwich. And one more. This is why this knife has that fine serrated edge. Do lots of sawing motions to cut through your tomato rather than just push. And then layer it onto our lovely buttered bread. A pinch of salt sprinkled over the top, really brings that tomatoey flavour out. There we have a beautiful tomato sandwich. Day one of tomato lunch. Yum! Another basic tomatoey option is some of our gherkin or cucumber. And I'm just going to part peel this sort of halfway because I find this all of the skin just a little bit bitter so that bit can go in the compost I have this chunk of gherkin save that bit for later and chop it into cubes just cube it up little centimeter squares half inch and into our bowl Then to that, I shall add some of our tomatoes. So our little ones. So again, we're looking at about centimetre square chunks of tomato. Into the bowl with our gherkin. So again, little half inch centimetre sized chunks. And into the bowl. around mix it in I want some more tomato because I like lots of tomato that's why I grow so many now just as with our tomato sandwich a little sprinkle of salt is going to make this tomato gherkin salad absolutely delicious but what I like to do with it is a little splash of balsamic vinegar that's plenty dribbly drop and stir that in we have a delicious tomato and gherkin salad 
to serve with any of your summer meals. Lovely. So today I've got this with some cold chicken and a slice of bread and butter on the side. Delicious tomato lunch for day two. In the polytunnel, harvesting beautiful ripe tomatoes. Yay! There's so many on all sides of me. And as if there weren't enough tomatoes when it worked up, today we have even more wonderful. A gherkin maybe to go with them would be nice. Let's see, can we get one? Well, after our tomato harvest at the polytunnel yesterday, I have lots more wonderful tomatoes. So today I'm going to can these up, ready for use through the winter. I've got my canning jars ready and my, my biggest saucepan. I think it's eight pints. It's not that huge, but it's the biggest pan I own. So I'm simply going to chop up these tomatoes, just cut them in half enough to let that juice escape and put them all or as many as I can fit into this pan. But before I start canning my tomatoes today, I'm going to make myself another tomato -y lunch. On today's lunch menu is brown butter tomatoes. Now this is a relatively new recipe for me. I came across it from another YouTuber, Roots and Refuge Farm. But since she showed it on her channel a couple of weeks ago, I've made brown butter tomatoes at least four or five times. It is delicious and is definitely going to become a staple of my tomato season kitchen. So here's how to make brown butter tomatoes. To make the brown butter tomatoes, you'll need a bowl of tomatoes. This is my cereal bowl. There's about eight ounces of tomatoes in here. An ounce of butter, a pinch of salt, and if you like pepper, a crack of black pepper as well. First of all, we'll prepare our tomatoes, take off the green bits and chop them up. Now you can chop or slice whichever you find you prefer. I tend to do a combination of both. I'll take a couple of slices and then chop up that last little piece. My tomato -y knife again today. So a couple of slices. That last bit I'm just going to cut in half. Oh, bring this back. There we go. And into the bowl they go. Apparently brown buttered tomatoes is supposed to taste similar to lobster. But as I've never had lobster, I can't confirm whether it does or not. Now I know I started with about eight ounces of tomato, but I think I've probably got enough for me now. So I'm going to leave those last two and put them in my canning tomato mixture. Next, I'm going to brown the butter. Now I tend to use a frying pan for this, but you could do it in a saucepan. Now I do appreciate it's not easy to see browning butter in the frying pan, especially when the frying pan is black. And I considered doing this in my saucepans. But my saucepans happen to be smoked glass, so they wouldn't be much good for showing you how to brown butter. So I browned some butter and poured it into this small glass dish so you could see the colour difference after it's turned from golden yellow butter into this beautiful nutty brown. Just as your butters turn that lovely golden brown colour, we want to pour it piping hot over your prepared tomatoes. Using a spatula to get every last bit of that lovely, tasty brown butter. Now, 
optional, a little sprinkle of salt and a crack of black pepper. Now, I'm not a big spicy fan, so I'm going to eat it just like this. Well, not completely like this. I'm going to add a slice of bread to mop up those extra juices and my brown butter tomatoes. A lovely lunchtimey snack. Day three tomato lunch. Having enjoyed that delicious tomato snack, time to turn the rest of these tomatoes into canned tomatoes to store and use throughout the winter months. I've already made a batch of canned tomatoes this year. So this will be my second and I suspect there might be more to come. So let's go and can some tomatoes. I make canning my tomatoes a really simple process. These gardeners delight small tomatoes. I'm just going to chop in half to release those juices and get the cooking process started quicker. Into the big saucepan they go. These little tiny tomatoes I'm just going to put straight in the pan. My bigger tomatoes like my Italian plum and the Italian beef steak I will chop up into chunks about the size of these Gardener's Delight tomatoes just so we get an even cook. Well these Italian plums are done really well for me this year. Just keep chopping and dicing till our saucepan is full. Well as you see I still have a few tomatoes left and my saucepan is as full as I'd like it to be. I've got about eight pound of tomatoes in this pan and that'll do for today and I can eat these as brown buttered tomatoes over the next couple of days. So let's get these on the stove and cooking. As I said, I keep my canning tomato recipe really simple. I'm just going to have my eight pounds of tomatoes and a teaspoonful of salt. That's all that will be going into this recipe. I've actually already added the salt, so I'm not going to put a second spoonful in. Put these on the stove and cook them till they're hot and boiling and bubbly. Now this has started cooking and getting hot, it's reduced down quite a bit and I think it's given me enough room in this pan to add the rest of those tomatoes. So I'm going to chop them up and throw them in now. Last lot. In they go. Yay! Got them all in. Stir those in, get them nice and hot. Now if you get any larger pieces of just tomato skin, as you're stirring, they'll float to the top of the pan. I will take these big pieces out. Right, leave that to bubble while I go make a coffee. As I mentioned, I will remove any larger pieces of tomato skin that happen to float to the surface of the pan. But there's no need to be overly picky. I'm going to put the stick blender in this pan full of tomatoes, so any skin that's still there will get blended up with everything else. Healthy, nutritious and good for you. It's surprising how many skins you actually do collect. Just squeezing the juice out of these to get every last drop. So once this is boiling and bubbling, I've got my jars ready. I've taken all the lids off. And I'm going to whiz this up with my stick blender. Seeds and skins and all. Now you could jar this up now without using the stick blender with its few remaining chunks and lumps is absolutely fine but I know I'm going to use this mixture to make tomato sauce, 
pasta sauce, tomato soup, add to a bolognese, all sorts of things I'd like it to be smooth and pureed with. So I'm going to smooth it and puree it now. With my particular blender, I find I often get bits of skin stuck in the outlets. So I just add that, flick it off, but you can't see. <laughs> I flick it off and add it to my plate full of skins back in with a blender lovely pureed tomato yay so now I'm ready to put this in my canning jars Well, that lid and scrape. This is hot, so be careful. And there's my next jar. from today's tomato canning adventure. Five full jars of beautiful homemade tomato puree ready to store and use for our winter recipes. And a sixth jar that didn't quite make it to the top. So now I need to wait as the, for these jars to cool down and create a seal. As they cool, the lids will make a popping noise to let me know that that jar is properly sealed and food safe. This empty jar does the same, so we have this pop in the lids. Once all my jars have gone cold, even if I didn't hear the pop happening, I can always test them by pushing on the lids. And as long as they don't make a popping sound, they're good to go, but if I get that click and pop, oh, there goes one now. <laughs> now, with my not quite full jar, even if it does create a seal today, I won't be storing it long term. I'll, once it's cold, I'll put this one in the fridge and make a point of using it up in the next week or two. The wonderful sound of popping jars. Hello again and it's another day of tomato lunch. Today we've had lots of rain and thunder and lightning. It's been very exciting. So I thought the perfect day to have tomato soup. Now there are lots of wonderful recipes online for homemade tomato soups. And I have no doubt they are all delicious. Using sweated onions and garlic and chicken stock and vegetable stock and all sorts of delicious herbs and ingredients. But the tomato soup I make most of the time is very basic. Using my pureed tomatoes, salt, sugar and double cream. Now yesterday there wasn't quite enough tomato puree to fill this last canning jar. So I'm going to use that up today and turn it into soup. And last week when I canned tomatoes, I had one jar that didn't seal. And I know that because the lid still clicks. 
So since it went cold a week ago, I've been storing that jar in the fridge. So today's a perfect day to get it used up. Now I don't usually measure what's going into my soup. It's a sprinkle of this and a splash of that until things taste and look correct. But I will do my best today to get measurements of exactly what I'm doing so you can choose to copy it if you wish. So first of all, how much pureed tomato am I going to need? Well, not necessarily need, but how much am I actually going to use? So this is the gel that didn't seal. And I'm just going to give that a taste actually. Just to make sure it's not started fermenting. It should be fine. It was boiling hot when it went in the jar and it's been in the fridge ever since it cooled down. Lovely. What I'm tasting for is any sort of vinegariness or tanginess or fizz. All things that would give me a clue that this had started to ferment. As I said, I have every confidence it will be fine and I suspect it will be perfectly fine for at least another couple of weeks stored in the fridge. But it's always worth checking. Oh, I'm going to try and measure. So I've got my measuring jug. I'll put all my soups in there first. So we can see how much of that tomato puree I'm actually using. So that's last week's jar. And then we have yesterday's not quite full jar, which did seal. So I'm going to need to use the back of my table knife to push that lid off. Pop. <laughs> and that can go in our measuring jug as well. So how much have I actually got with those two jars? That's flour, that's no good. One and a quarter pints of tomato puree, which is 700 millilitres. So that can all go into our saucepan. Now you could heat your soup in the microwave. I'm choosing to do it on the stove top today. So you can see what's happening. This is going to take a while to warm through because it's been stored in the fridge. So it's fridge cold. So I'll bring you back when this is hot and steaming. Well, here we are back, nice and steaming and hot. So the first thing I'm going to add is a little sugar to this tomato mixture. As I say, I usually don't measure, I just sprinkle things in till it tastes right. So I'm starting with one teaspoon. There we go, sugar's in the way. So a teaspoon full of sugar into our tomato -y mixture. I'm going to stir that through. Give it a taste and see what I think. Now remember, we've already got some salt in our tomato puree mix. Get my tasting spoon. For me personally, I think I'd like another half teaspoon. We should be getting just about right. So we're pretty much working out at half a teaspoon a jar of my tomato puree and I'm also going to add a pinch more salt. Now I've got myself a quarter teaspoon measure and that is way too much at this point so I'm just going to sprinkle in a pinch, literally a pinch, there is lots left in that measuring spoon still and give it another taste and see how we're doing. Should be getting pretty close to the flavour I would like. But you can adapt and adjust it to the flavour you would like. Little bit more salt. Another sprinkling of salt. So I've maybe used about half of that quarter teaspoon now. And one more taste before we start adding cream. I'll have eaten all the soup before it gets to the table. Mm. 
Nice. And next we're going to add some double cream. I've got myself an American cup style measure, uh, half a cup, which is four ounces of whatever you put in it. Today I'm putting cream in it. So I'm going to fill my half cup measure, my four ounces with cream. And that's probably going to be enough, but we'll see. That changes the colour to that typical cream of tomato soup colour you're used to seeing. So I'll give it a stir, mix that all in. Now at this point, just before you serve, you might like to run it through the stick blender once more, just to make it even smoother than it already is. Depends how smooth you like it and how smooth you manage to puree up your tomatoes before you put them in the canning jars. So time to serve this soup. Day four tomato lunch. A drizzle of cream on top to make it look pretty. Now my preference would be served with warm crusty rolls, but I have tiger bread left. So I'm going to use it up. And with the soup I still have remaining in my saucepan, I'm going to add that to a nice clean jar. Seal it up, let it cool, then pop it in the fridge, ready to be eaten in the next couple of days. An instant lunch at some point in the next couple of days. Now I don't know how long our cream of tomato soup will actually keep in the canning jars, probably for months or years, but I've never attempted to keep it any length of time. Once this has gone cold today, I'll put it in the fridge and over the next three or four days, I'll make sure it gets eaten up. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it! If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it! Here's one that didn't quite make the cut. Hello again, it's the following day after canning our tomatoes yesterday. <clears> Hi, <throat> oh, my voice is hollow.